um, you can access our meeting either uh, live on the Air District uh, YouTube channel or later uh, we'll make a video recording of it. We'll make a, uh, the video of this uh, meeting available on the Air District's website. So again, welcome everybody and thank you again, Frida, for uh, providing the interpretation for this evening's meeting. Um, so if we can go ahead to the next slide, we just want to talk about um, Great, uh, so we can go to the next slide. Um, so again, the big goal of tonight is to approve the Portside Community Emissions Reduction Plan or the SERP as we like to call it. It's a big deal and it's been a lot of hard work and time and energy that everybody, uh, both uh, you know, members of the public and members of the steering committee and Air District staff and California Air Resources Board staff um, have been uh, putting forth a lot of work into getting us to this point tonight. Um, we'll also have an update this evening after we vote on that for um, to discuss the uh, update of the program to distribute air filters and monitors in the Portside community um, that the Air District has developed. Um, so if we go to the next slide, Joanny. Um, great, just review the agenda. Um, so after we do our uh, roll call um, and updates, we'll go into approving the minutes of the May meeting. Um, and then we'll do a final overview of the key elements of the SERP. So Domingo uh, will lead us through a presentation to talk about changes to the SERP. Uh, we'll talk about the prioritization of goals in the SERP. And then we'll do the most important thing that the steering committee will do is take a vote on that SERP. Um, then we'll have the update and then we'll have some public comments and then closing remarks and we'll adjourn. Um, so again, just a reminder of our meeting agreement that we want to make sure that we are creating space for uh, everyone to contribute, that uh, if we are shy, that we step up and you know push ourselves to speak. And then if we talk too much sometimes or catch ourselves kind of dominating the meeting, if we take a step back to give space for others. Um, as always, I think this group of five is great on this. Um, you know, We don't speak over each other. We listen to each other, but listen for understanding and always respecting each other's opinions, knowledge, and perspective. Um, we're conscious of time, which is my job as your facilitator. And please speak slowly and clearly for the interpreter. Um, I am guilty of speaking too fast sometimes. So uh, let's all try to remember that Frida is translating every, interpreting everything we say. Um, so again, we'll just start with the roll call of our student committee members. Um, so uh, I'll, again, if you can just, if you see your name, if you can just say if you're here or not. Um, Ashley Rocia Tremonti. I'm here. Great. Uh, Jack Munger. I'm here, thank you. Great. Uh, Matthew Hatch. Hi, I'm here. Great. Sarah Giobi. I'm here. Great. Uh, Sandy, Commissioner Sandy Naranjo. And I believe there's a port commission meeting that's going over. And um, so there's a, I believe there's a port commission meeting that's gone over time. Um, but Larry Hofreiter, her alternate is here. Yep, uh, here. And yeah, uh, thank you, Daniela. Uh, uh, Commissioner Naranjo should, should be here shortly. It's just running a little long. Great. And Elisa Arias, I think, also had a SANDAG meeting. So, Carrie Robinson, you're here. Hi, I'm here. Thank you. Um, Joy Williams. I'm here. Thank you. Great. Uh, Jorge Gonzalez. I'm here. Thank you. Great. Martin Reeder. Or do we have anyone from the National City here tonight? Okay, Martin is not here. We don't have National City. David Welch is here. Okay, great, David. Um, and David, are you a panelist this evening? If not, we'll make you a panelist. Okay. Um, then Roman Partido Lopez. Uh, here. Great. Stephanie Yoon. Um, here. And Sabrina Perino, are you also here tonight? Okay. Uh, Jose Marquez Chavez. I saw Jose in the chat or in the, I believe sure. Jose is here. Yes, there he is. Hey, Jose. Uh, great. AC Jamal. Here. Great. Uh, Helen Hoff. Here, here. Great. Uh, Dinah Willier. I'm here. Great, Dinah. Uh, Filomena Marino. I'm here. Great. Janice Reynoso. Here. Ed Godshock. Here. Uh, Hillary Medina. No Hillary tonight. Alicia Sanchez. Okay. Margarita Moreno. 
I'm here. Okay, uh, Vanessa Contreras. No, Vanessa, okay. Salvador Razo Abrica. Okay. Um, Montserrat Hernández. Presente. Perfecto. Silvia Calzada. Present. Ashley Valentín. Here. Okay. Josefín Talamantes. I'm here. Marisa Contreras. Present. Okay. And I believe, is Naomi Sanchez here? Naomi, are you here this evening? Okay, Naomi is not here. Okay, uh, full disclosure, everyone, I'm on vacation in Lake Tahoe, so I am standing, I am outside, um, so if there's background noise, it may be mine this evening, so I'm so sorry for that. Uh, I, I'm getting some messages in the chat. I will be on mute when I'm not talking, which will be most of the meeting, so um, hopefully the noise will die down. I, I, my apologies for that. Um, are there any general updates, Flamingo, that you wanted to share before we started? Uh, no, not really. I'll, I'll save my remarks for the for my presentation, but thanks for checking. Great. Okay, so with that, um, I think we'll just start with uh, asking for someone to uh, vote. Uh, if, if there's any, if, if there's not any concerns with the meeting notes in the May meeting, um, we'll ask for someone to make a motion to approve the meetings from the meeting minutes from the May meeting. I'll move that way. Great. Do we have a second? I'll second it. This is Sylvia. Great. Anybody with any uh, concern or opposition to approving the minutes? Great, hearing none, um, our minutes are approved. And with that, we can move on to the most important uh, part of this evening, exciting point. It's been a lot of work and energy that's gotten us here. So I'm gonna hand it off to Domingo Vigil to provide us with a final overview of the key elements of the CERP. So go ahead, Domingo. Thank you, Daniela, and thank you everybody for being here tonight and not just tonight, but also throughout this process. Uh, I know that uh, some of you have been uh, part of the steering committee since day one and even uh, engaged even before the steering committee was formed. So it's been, it's been a, a, a long journey uh, and today is not the end of it. It's an important milestone. Today, I, I like to see it as the beginning of a very exciting uh, phase, which will be, um, you know, getting, getting to our, our final approval by our board and the, and the state and then moving to implementation. So, um, Again, I just wanted to take a moment to thank everybody, to thank all the different organizations and agencies that have been collaborating with us. Uh, I know that I, I just jumped in into this process uh, in the last November, but um, I, 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 it was very apparent to me all the work that had been done till that point. And, and then you know, we, we completed a lot more work uh, to get us to this point. So just wanted to take a moment and, and acknowledge that and, and congratulate everybody uh, for this uh, important uh, accomplishment of, of getting us to this point. And also thank you for your commitment uh, to the AB 617 program and to the Portside community. So uh, with that, I'll go ahead and get started with my presentation. Um, Joanne, if you can uh, bring up my slides or I'm not sure who's, uh, there we go. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. So this is just a quick overview of our timeline, um, just to capture uh, everything that, that's been uh, happening, all the major milestones. The Portside community uh, was nominated for this program by APCD and was selected by CARB uh, to participate in December of 2019. And since then, the Community Steering Committee has been working with APCD, CARB, local jurisdictions, agencies, and stakeholders to develop the SERP. Last November, the Air Pollution Control Board approved phase one of the SERP, which included a set of early actions that are currently being implemented. After November of last year, APCD staff continued working with the Community Steering Committee to finalize phase two, which is our current stage to complete the plan following CARB's blueprint under AB 617. Uh, a final proposed SERP uh, will be presented to the APCD board uh, for their consideration in July. And upon approval from the APCD board, the last step of this timeline is presenting the finalized SERP to the California Resources Board for approval in October. Throughout this process, uh, community engagement has been key and we have come together to collaborate through regular community meetings and workshops 
and we have also conducted bilingual outreach via email, printed materials, and social media. Next slide, please. So this is just a very general overview of the contents of the SERP. Uh, it's organized in seven chapters, as all of you know, providing information on the following areas, which are required by the state's uh, blueprint for the community air protection program. Chapter one on community profile describes the Portside community and why and how it was selected. Chapter two, it's an overview, uh, I'm sorry, it's a, on community outreach and engagement and describes the process to establish and convene the Portside Community Steering Committee and stakeholder and public involvement to develop the SERP. Chapter three is a technical assessment on emission inventory data and it contains a detailed discussion of community level emissions and their sources. Chapter four is a technical assessment on monitoring and it provides data based on APCD's regional air monitoring stations. And additional mon monitoring data is currently being captured in the community to continue informing air quality status and progress. Chapter five on APCD enforcement describes the program elements used by APCD to enforce local air pollution control regulations. Chapter six on CARBS enforcement plan for the Portside community provides CARBS review of three years of stationary and mobile source enforcement data to assess local air quality issues within the Portside community. And then finally, chapter seven on actions and strategies. Uh, this, the proposed SERP actions uh, in this chapter define the path to further reduce air pollution from sources in the community. And this chapter also includes overall goals for the SERP and a sequel analysis. Next slide, please. As shown earlier, as part of our timeline, phase one was approved by APCD board in November of 2020 and it included actions under the categories you see on the slide. And phase one also received unanimous support by the Port Sites uh, Community Steering Committee. So I just wanted to uh, mention some early successes from phase one, uh, which include uh, under our outreach and community engagement and an office of environmental justice was established within APCD, starting with two full-time positions dedicated to this effort. And a framework is currently being developed for this office. And we will thread across agencies, including the County of San Diego's recently established Office of Environmental and Climate Justice to support environmental justice work in the region. Under our, our incentives uh, strategies, we have funded projects in the Portside community, which include cleaner school buses and an electric tugboat. We are also developing an incentive program to provide air filtration systems to households within the Portside community. Phase one also included early commitments from other entities such as the port, shipyards, and the Navy. As part of these commitments, the port has de deployed a total of five zero emission trucks and two marine terminals within the Portside community and is currently working on achieving additional emission reductions from replacing older cargo handling equipment and from a number of additional projects. The shipyards have implemented policies requiring air compressors to be powered by zero emission technology or tier four engines. And the Navy is operating in port ships on shore power to the fullest extent practical, practical when ported at the base. These early commitments and results reflect the collaborative approach of the SERP partners and reflect the value of community input in informing air quality priorities in the Portside community. Uh, APCD staff will continue to work with these entities to track the completion of additional projects and commitments including in this, included in the SERP. Next slide, please. Phase two of the SERP includes actions under the categories you see on the slide. These actions have been the main area of focus and refinement since phase one was approved last November and have been developed by, by steering committee members, including members of the community. Next slide, please. The draft SERP was available for public comment on April, from April 19 to May 7. During that time, two public workshops were held on April 27 and April 28. The main themes of comments received are overall support for the SERP, further alignment of some actions with the Port's Maritime Cleaner Strategy or MCAS, requests for clarification of some actions and terms, requests for modifications to placement and presentation of information, requests to consider incorporating additional emission reduction rules, and recommendations related to SERP goals. Staff evaluated comments received and worked with stakeholders to address comments in accordance to community priorities. The comments and responses were reviewed by the SERP subcommittee. And the following slides include changes that were made on the SERP based on comments received. Next slide, please. 
So to start on the executive summary, we updated table one on sources of criteria pollutants in the Portside community to present data more clearly and to be consistent with the way it's presented in chapter three. We also added tables with SERP goals and a summary of actions from SERP from chapter seven. This with the purpose of bringing these, uh, this information to the forefront of the document. Uh, however, all the detail uh, within each of the actions is still, um, is still uh, under chapter seven. Chapter, uh, for chapter two, we added language to update a section on public workshops to include the recent SERP workshops held in April. On chapter three, we made changes to tables regarding toxic air contaminants to reflect corrections made by CARB, specifically regarding uh, hexavalent chromium emissions. We added clarifying language to the discussion on, on how toxicity weighted emissions are calculated in chapter three, just to provide more um, clarity. Next slide, please. Uh, throughout chapter seven, we made just minor edits to clarify language, but more uh, importantly, or more specifically under truck strategies, we updated action E1 to reflect most current action by the Ports Board of Commissioners regarding track ele truck electrification and charging stations. Action E5 was updated on ensuring fair outcomes for truck drivers. The, this action was removed as a standalone action, but it was incorporated into action E2, which used to only focus on fair outcomes for small fleet owners and now includes truck, truck drivers as well. So it was pairing these two actions into one. Under the land use strategies, action F3 was updated to, to clarify language on collaboration towards urban greening. Under working waterfront activities, Action G6 was updated to include more specific actions and timelines for the port's support to reducing emissions from harbor craft, including new excursion vessels and tugs and new and in-use short-run ferries. The section on estimated emission reductions from CARB measures was updated to include clarifying language on CARB's proposed statewide measures and associated estimated emission reductions. And then finally, a section was added on California Environmental Quality Act analysis as required by CARB's blueprint. District staff has looked at all the aspects of the SERP and has determined that the SERP is exempt from the requirements of CEQA. This section also identifies the CEQA exemptions that apply to the SERP. Next slide. So for Appendix A, we updated uh, tables to um, include updated information from CARB on, uh, on road toxic emissions in the Port Tide community. And this again was um, referring to um, hexavalent chromium emissions. Uh, Appendix B was updated um, just to uh, include in the title that we were also um, uh, providing diesel particulate matter together with um, criteria pollutants. However, we are still um, working on incorporating that particular data into Appendix A, the data on diesel particulate matter. Uh, Appendix C uh, was added to the SERP and this it contains a metrics table. And finally, Appendix D was also uh, added uh, with a table with public comments received So I wanna take some time to um, highlight uh, uh, some of the, the changes in the goals. Uh, the SERP includes aspirational goals intended to guide the community members, businesses, organizations, and government agencies partnering in the implementation of this, of this plan to support health and environmental justice in the Portside community. The overall goals identify, identify the direction in which the community wants to go to achieve emission reductions beyond regulatory requirements. And what you see on the screen is just a summary of the, the main content of those goals. Next slide, please. So just to clarify um, one more time, goals are not enforceable. They are aspirational in nature, which means that they reflect the community's vision for Portside and will help inform the community's advocacy efforts. The commitments made by the implementing agencies are included in the SERP actions, and these will be tracked with our identified metrics. One of the comments received during the public comment period was to rearrange the goals in order of potential benefit to the community. 
So based on this recommendation, the SERP subcommittee recommended reordering the goals based on two scenarios. One was based on emissions reduction potential and the second one based on health benefit potential. After reordering the goals for both categories, emission reductions and health benefits, and considering the preliminary modeling that CARB conducted for, for health risks, the same reordering resulted under both scenarios. So only one scenario is being proposed and was supported by the SERP subcommittee. The proposed reordering prioritizes goals related to reduction of diesel emissions and truck electrification goals, followed by goals related to reduction of cumulative cancer risk, and finally goals related to truck freight, imp freight improvements and urban greening. This document was shared um, in advance of this meeting with the justification for why each goal was moved uh, to the placement where it currently lies. So after consideration of, th these are just the, our, our next steps. Uh, after consideration of the SERP for, appro for approval by the steering committee tonight, the next step is to present the SERP to the APCD board for their, board for their consideration on July 16th and subsequently submit the SERP to, the CARP, to CARP for its board's consideration in October and officially start the implementation period with annual progress reports after, board, after CARP approves the SERP. APCD will continue collaborating with community members, CARB, local jurisdictions, and regional agencies to track implementation over the next five years and collaborate on addressing any potential challenges. The steering committee uh, should consider the formation of working groups to support the implementation of the SERP. And this is something that we would like to bring back in a future meeting, but um, I wanted to bring it up today just for, for folks to start thinking about what would be the best way for us to get organized to make sure that all of the different actions are being implemented and the collaboration continues. Uh, for the development of the SERP, I know we have the SERP subcommittee, the land use committee, the trucking uh, subcommittee. Uh, however, I, I, I would like us to think about whether these subcommittees uh, would still function in the same way to support implementation or if it makes sense to get reorganized in a way that, um, that we can continue to promote the collaboration across agencies to move forward all the actions in the SERP. So something for us to think about and, and discuss uh, further uh, on our next meeting. So just a little bit of homework for us to think about. And then finally, uh, something else that I wanted to bring up is uh, the meeting frequency of this uh, steering committee. So I know that we have been meeting monthly and uh, moving forward with implementation, it will continue to be important for us to meet, um, to touch base and provide updates. Uh, but I think that most of the work will happen uh, probably outside of these, um, not probably, but really it will happen outside of these meetings. So knowing that we might be reorganized to uh, work with, with different working groups and the frequency of some of those meetings uh, might overlap with our monthly meeting. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, to bring this up just for folks to keep it in mind that moving forward, uh, it might be beneficial to, for us to reconsider the frequency of the string committee meetings, just in case it's more beneficial to leave a little bit more time in between the meetings, perhaps going to every other month. Or if you find that meeting monthly still, uh, still serves the, the purpose of the, of the steering committee, then we can continue to monthly meetings, but just something to, for us to think about. Um, but in the more immediate future, something that I would like to propose is uh, to not have a meeting in August. I have been um, discussing this idea with, with a few of you and given that um, you know, we are now reopening um, you know, we're not following the, the tiered system for the, for the pandemic anymore. Uh, and folks are also um, having, you know, their kids uh, out on vacation from school and are, might be considering taking some time off. Uh, just something for us to consider uh, potentially having that uh, month uh, free with no meetings also to kind of take a, a break. I know that we've all been working uh, really hard on this, uh, on this project. And after our presentation uh, to the board in July, uh, I thought it would be a good opportunity for us to, to take a little bit of a break. So um, we'll get your input on that um, 
in, the, in, in a few moments, but just wanted to also bring that up. Uh, and with that, uh, I conclude my presentation tonight and I'd like to open it up for uh, comments or questions. So back to you, Daniela. Great, Domingo. So with that, um, if, again, if we can use the virtual hand tool to uh, raise our hands, if we have um, a question or a comment and we can start the queue up. Um, and if you're unable to find that, you can um, type your name into the chat. And I see um, Jack with his hand up already and members of the public too will take comments from the steering committee. But if you also want to um, make a comment, please feel free to raise your hand. We'll take comments from the steering committee first and then go to the members of the public. Um, but go ahead, Jack. Thank you, Daniela. Um, I guess my first question is, we've, since we've got quite a large document to uh, consider tonight and um, most recent changes with the, uh, the goal report reprioritization, how would you want to go through this? Uh, do you want to go through chapter by chapter um, or do you want to go person by person in terms of issues to raise? I, I just want to know what your thoughts about the best way to, to um, constructively uh, look at this. Sure. I think I think that it would be best to just go person by person. If anybody has any comments, uh, you know, they can bring it up specifically regarding any any parts of the document. Uh, we share the document, uh, you know, in advance as well as the goals in hopes that that the folks had some time to take a look at it. Not you know, not a lot changed over the you know from the last time that we brought this document um, up to the steering committee and and from our workshops. But I figured that I would just focus on summarizing the changes uh, to the document in the presentation and then open it up to the members of the steering committee or members of the public who may have any uh, specific comments on the document. So uh, with that, if anybody wants to bring anything up, um, we're ready to, um, to discuss. Well, so, so Ace, oh, yeah, did, oh, did, you, did you want to go ahead, Jack? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. I mean, I just wanted to know how you wanted to do it before I launched into this. Um, got a number of them. I'm not going to try to go through all of the comments that we have. I'll just go through a couple of them and then, and then, and then um, let the discussion go as or how you want to handle that. I, I mean, the first um, is the, the, the reprioritization of the goals. That was going to be one of our requests. I think that was a, a, a really positive change that you've made to this because several of those needed to occur before others. So we very much appreciate that. Um, but one of the suggestions, and maybe this is part of what a subcommittee could ultimately um, look at, and that would be, um, there's a lot of background noise. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, there we go. Um, one, of the, one of the issues would be, so there's been so many references made to Cal Screen um, as issues that need to be addressed in this process. And, and they're really more than just underlying goals for what we're trying to accomplish here. They are really, in a lot of cases, the, the actual scientific, um, the, the, the state supported data for what um, conditions um, should be addressed or what conditions really set the um, Portside community apart from many other areas of San Diego. So one of the things we were, would like to suggest is that we look at these goals as we're going forward and as they're being evaluated and maybe even prioritize further uh, the action items. We look at those for, in terms of what they will, how they will improve those facets of the Cal Virus screen. So I'm talking about things like, is it going to improve ozone? Is it going to improve PM 2.5 and reduce PM 2.5? Is it going to reduce diesel PM? And then all the other some dozen um, um, actual indicators so that we can um, know that we're actually addressing something um, that is going, if we accomplish it, going to make a difference for the community. So that was one suggestion um, with regard to, okay, so the, the second one when you've already covered because you reordered um, goal number two. Um, on page 40 of the um, current document, um, table six, we've got, uh, uh, it shows there, uh, I don't know if you want to flip to that page, um, diesel parts per million um, from stationary sources is, is 2.6%. Um, so I think it, we've acknowledged that that's a very small part, but then it goes on to show hexachrome for stationary sources jumped from 2.18% to 73.9%. I mean, there's a lot of changes and that was an enormous change. And I think you referred to it in your opening comments. So we were just wondering, where's the data for that or what, what, what happened to, um, to result in, 
uh, that huge increase and, and what, what, um, what backup data is available to, um, uh, to support that. And thanks for asking that question, um, Jack. Uh, first, let me go back to, to your previous comment about the uh, um, emission reductions um, for, for the specific um, uh, pollutants. Some, some of the metrics that we're, that we're going to be focusing on for all the different actions are, are emissions reductions whenever possible. What, what, uh, what are some of the measurable results that all of these actions are bringing to the community? So that's that's where um, a lot of the focus will be for our for our metrics. Um, but for your question on table six, and, and actually the the number that you mentioned um, has changed now too. Um, I know that you mentioned seventy some percent. It actually um, it should have been sixty four point eight percent. So it's it's lower than that. And what's what happened is that there was a there was an error in some of the data that was provided to us uh, initially, and we have been working with CARB to update some of those numbers. Um, so uh, there will be a little bit more uh, on that um, as we continue to update the numbers that that were provided to us. But uh, this is this is based on on uh, um, an inventory data that we have. Uh, at the district and also uh, on projection, I'm sorry, projections and calculations that uh, CARB staff has provided to us. And I know that I believe we have, we might have folks from CARB joining us tonight. Yes, if Benigo, anybody would like we to have in. Um, Charania, um, and I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, and I just promoted you to panelists. You should be able to also start your camera if you want to talk. And if you do that, I can um, spotlight you. So do you want to go ahead? I know that this is something that CARB had, was providing assistance to, to the district. Thank you, Charania. Yeah, thank you, Daniela, and thank you, Domingo. Uh, hi, Jack, and I just wanted to clarify this for everybody. So uh, what actually happened, um, the reason for the district stationary source emission percentages to go up is because we noticed that there was an error in our on-road calculations, and that's thanks to you guys, because I think at one of your last CSE meetings, you guys were wondering why the area sources had such large hexachrome emissions, especially from dust categories. So then we were able to go back and look and hex, for hexachrome, CARB does not have a speciation profile. Speciation profiles are like these factors that we use to kind of look at toxics from the, uh, the top, the total organic emissions as well as the total particulate emissions that we estimate for each category. Then we apply these factors for these um, organic toxics uh, that are uh, present in some of the organic emissions uh, and apply those factors to the total organics to get the toxics that are in organics and apply the factors that are related to the particulate toxics to the total PM to get the speciated toxics. So we did notice that um, uh, there was a slight error because CARB does not have a specific hexachrome um, you know, profile for on-road sources, but in order to kind of uh, kind of somehow account for some of the hexachromes that come from fuel combustion, we generally have been using a five percent of total chromium emissions as hexachrome for all fuel combustion processes. These are liquid fuel combustion processes, so that's how we've been kind of doing it for the national emission inventory that we submit to the EPA. So we kind of applied that for the community scale emission inventories as well. But in order, instead of applying it just to the fuel combustion processes, unfortunately, there was an error in our coding and we had applied it to uh, dust categories as well. So that 5% of uh, the emissions that you guys saw from on-road sources as well as from area-wide sources attributed to those dust categories were because we augmented the, um, the TAC emissions for hexachrome uh, to kind of include that 5% of total chromium emissions. So once we corrected for it, um, the on-road emissions as well as the area-wide emissions kind of came down and then the actual reported emissions from the district sources kind of went up. So those other sources have zero emissions? Jack, you're, you were on mute, also. is that Sarah? So I guess is the, are, is the point right now that those other sources have zero emissions? Oh, well, no, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't say that they have zero emissions, but based on the best data that we have to estimate those emissions, um, you know, those are the factors that we have at this, at this time. 
I'm sure there is sex chrome or related to dust categories as well, but we really do not have a profile to kind of estimate those emissions at this time. So if I understand you right, and I'm not sure I understood all of that, um, was not no, no fault of yours. I just, um, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not an air scientist, um, but we've, we've changed now this data. We had a huge changes when this data was first input into the SERP uh, a year ago. So now though, it sounds like we're making additional changes, but um, we're not any more confident in the data that is being reported for stationary sources. We are just eliminated other data and it's gotta go somewhere. Well, I, I would kind of have uh, Domingo or the district staff kind of talk about the hex room emissions from reported sources, but for other categories like area wide and mobile sources, uh, the best data profiles that we have to estimate hex chrome is what's being currently used. And uh, it's just that the previous data had error in the calculations. So it sounds like there was a mistake that was corrected yeah. for that led to this. Uh, that led to this. And so I think it's in the effort to kind of tighten everything up and be precise at the end that this has happened. Okay. All right, Jeff, do you want to continue or? Um... Yeah, I, I, I just have to say, I'm not really comfortable with, with what's taken place on that particular uh, thing. Um, and, and so just one last quick question on that. Did, does that mean that you do, you do have data uh, accurate, uh, reliable data that you can apply for hex chrome from mobile sources or um, cars and trucks or, I, or what? At this time, we don't, Jack. And the updated data that we present, that we are presented now to the district, which is included in the SERP, is the best data that we have okay. for mobile sources. Sure, Anya, and this is, this, uh, is this approach consistent with other districts that have yeah. approved SERPs? Yes. So for you know, we really don't have uh, a speciation profile for hexavalent chromium from on-road vehicles or for any mobile sources for that matter. So um, we are limited to the information we currently have and all districts use CARB speciation profiles to estimate these emissions. Uh, so most, you know, most of all other districts have used these same speciation profiles to estimate uh, on-road related hexavalent chromium emissions, except for South Coast uh, who have developed uh, a speciation profile for x chrome based on some of their mates work that the multiple air toxics emission study that they had done in previous years. So they do have uh, some specific uh, hex chrome profile for their region. So we're definitely going to talk to them to see if this that's a profile that we can look at and apply statewide. And if it is okay, then we'll definitely take a look at improving these emission estimates in the future. Uh, also, car staff are working on updating the speciation profiles for these categories. And we also have like a contract to look into um, the, uh, the hex chrome emissions from brakeware and from other on-road uh, you know, emission sources. So once that uh, contract is completed, uh, we do intend to update all of our speciation profiles related to this pollutant. Uh, all right, so I'm, I'm, um, I'm just gonna close this one out from our perspective by saying, that we have done some other research. We have found other districts doing and, 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 and in having additional data to use in this. And I think AC is gonna share some of what he found later on in the meeting. Um, but I'll, so I'll defer to him um, who, who's much more technically qualified to talk about this than I am. Um, it's just, once again, it's critical that the community understand what the sources of emissions are, where they're coming from, and I, I, as long as we're rushing out there to establish goals and action plans, when we're not really 100% sure, or we're, we're, our data is changed, that's that's just not good for not good for the community, not good for the steering committee, not good for anybody. So, um, let's see. The last question that I had is um, with regard to play, uh, page 54. Um, when I was going to ask, uh, the it said in there, I uh, wanted to ask. You would provide an explanation of the section added to the second paragraph regarding double counting of risk. Table eight on that page also talks about uh, cancer, uh, cancer risk weighted. Um, and again, here we have those numbers changing significantly. And is that the same 
basis or you're, you're assuming here or, or, or just wanted, so one of two things, one to understand um, the, um, the double counting of risk, where that was occurring and, and, and why again, those numbers went up so much. Yeah, so I, I think one of the, you know, Hexchrome does attribute to cancer risk. So some of the changes to the Hexchrome emissions would have affected the cancer risk, but the double counting that you're specifically talking about is from diesel PM sources, right? So diesel PM has all these individual species that are associated with it. So when we're actually doing a HRA, you kind of look at uh, each of these individual species and kind of look at the, the risks. But for the time being, when you're just kind of looking at the screening and comparative method to look at what is the toxicity weighted emissions and how these pollutants kind of compare against each other. So we kind of tried to say that. But Anya, we, this is, a, I'm sorry, this is super important and you're speaking super fast and it's you. really hard technical. <laughs> so, I mean, I think even if you can just simply say it, and sorry, our interpreter doesn't usually ask in okay. the chat, but okay, thank you. Sure, sure. I can go. I can go a little bit slower. So the double counting, Jack, essentially is uh, to kind of say that when we are doing the toxicity weighted emissions, uh, for that alone, we are just and if if it is if there is diesel PM, we are only looking at diesel PM. We are not looking at the individual species that constitute the diesel PM. Right. So because we are estimating a toxicity weighted emissions for diesel PM. And then if we were to also go and look at every single individual species that kind of constitute the diesel PM, then we would be kind of double counting those emissions. OK, I, I, I do understand that. Thank you for that explanation. And then then the last part was that um, what is what was meant by that uh, table eight cancer risk weighted um, and why those numbers change so much. So that's, that's exactly what we're talking about okay. here, the toxicity weighted emissions. So in order to compare one toxic against another, we couldn't just compare them based on their mass emissions, right? Like in pounds per year, because then that would not, because some toxics have higher toxicity and others do not. So in order to compare them on a level playing field, we have to kind of multiply those mass emissions with the, the cancer risk, right? Or the, the risk factors that you have, whether it's cancer or chronic or acute. Uh, health impacts that could happen. So we kind of adjust those mass emissions with these risk factors to then compare them to see what's the relative toxicity of each of these pollutants. So, so the area sources could go to zero in, uh, in spite of the fact that we've got two freeways running through the portside community. Yeah, but air, area sources don't really contribute to the, uh, the freeway emissions, right? So those are mostly related to on-road mobile source emissions. And, and there's definitely like construction dust and other things that could uh, be attributed to freeways and other areas, but it's just that we really do not have any profiles to estimate, uh, you know, chromium emissions for those categories. If you're talking about hex chrome at this point. Yeah. yeah. So I think AC is going to talk about that a little bit. I think it'll be very interesting for everyone. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Okay. Are we, Jack, can I move on to others? Absolutely. If, if okay, I, thanks. sorry, just, just quickly, I, I just wanted to make a, a quick comment because um, I, 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 I also think that, you know, it's very important to, you know, make decisions based on the, on the best data that we, that we can have. Um, but I think that at this point, uh, we feel comfortable with, you know, with the data that we have, because we know that it's the best available that we have. I think that um, moving forward, we'll always look to improve um, our, the, the information and the data we have. Um, so that we can, so that that can be reflected in the different actions that we're taking, and that can inform the actions that we take. Uh, but you know, talking to Carve staff, um, this is really the the best data available that we have at this point. Well, so that, I just that, wanted to to clarify I think we may, that. I think we would question that, but we'll, I'm I'm going to let that comment come for later. So thank you okay. for that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Sure. Great. Okay, with that, um, Joy, you've had your hands up, so thank you for patiently waiting. And then we'll go to AC, who um, in the chat had asked to be put into the queue after Joy. And then we'll go uh, to Sarah and Filomena. So um, go ahead, Joy. So good evening, everyone. Um, I want to start by, I think, um, agreeing with Domingo that what we have here is a pretty solid set of data. It's, um, you know, data is always going to keep changing. It's always going to keep improving. And there's always going to be room for more improvement, but I think we have enough here to know what are the big contributors to to health risk in the community. We know what the community's priorities are, and I think this SERP is a good reflection of what the community's priorities are. 
um, both in terms of health and emission reductions and, and uh, improvements to quality of life, such as more green space. So I want to thank everyone who's worked on this SERP and that uh, includes a big thank you to APCD staff, uh, to all the community members who've spent so many hours of their time working on the SERP in, in these steering committee meetings and the subcommittee meetings. Um, and uh, you know everyone else who's brought their time and creativity to those, those uh, actions and strategies. So um, I will be um, voting in favor of the SERP. I hope others will be as well. And I hope we get to hear from community members this evening too, and don't spend the entire time focusing on the, the more technical issues. Thank you. Thank you, Joy. Okay, AC, if you wanna go ahead and um, Johnny, do you wanna bring up uh, the screen with uh, the slides? So AC yes, did slide provide the slides. And okay, this thank you. Um, so uh, I'll just say kind of funny that um, I sent my presentation and data to Domingo and CARB and uh, they uh, have already tried to counter my, my presentations, which I find it very amusing. But I'll just go ahead and just present to you in very basic the information that I see that causes me concern about how hex chrome is being reported in the SERP. So let's look at uh, the top graph is table six of the SERP. And basically it says that um, of that, you have maybe mobile source contributes about seven pound, 0.7 pounds, less than a pound per year from mobile sources. And then stationary sources is the biggest contributor of two pounds per year. Now here's what caused me to have a little bit of issues or problems. They say they pull this data from Appendix A of the Toxic Air Report for 2018. Now, here is Appendix A, the Toxic Air Report. And as you can see, hex chrome for stationary sources is six pounds, all right? Mobile sources, 6,754 pounds. Are we really sure that with all the traffic, I-5, the overpass, that of that 6,754 pounds, only 0.7 pounds was actually attributed to that area? I don't know. But now I went ahead and, and actually I had a, a, another person assist me in looking at hex chrome being evaluated by other EJ communities. So next slide, please. There's only two slides. So this is by the South Coast AQMD Technical Advisory Group. And so here's what they calculated. First off, they looked at three EJ communities. Southeast LA, East Coachella Valley, and San Bernardino Valley. All of them, very bad areas, high, and just like, just like uh, the Portside communities, the major contributor to their pollution is diesel particulate matter. And of course, most of that is from mobile sources. And here's what I find is an issue. From their calculations, they show from Southeast LA up to 1700 pounds of hex chrome was released from mobile sources. From East Coachella Valley, 422 pounds. From San Bernardino Valley, 2,764 pounds. That's communities similar to you, okay? That's the problem. Now, um, and here's another interesting story. If you look at the San Bernardino graph, a majority of the hex chrome that was released was from breakware. And again, uh, that's, it, it, I had to think about that for a second, being the scientist, oh yeah, breaks, stainless steel composition. S stainless steel hex chrome, the chrome is about 10 to 30% chrome. So when you think about all those cars going down I-5 and all of a sudden there's a traffic jam and you hit those brakes really, really hard, Guess what happens? The chrome and the, and the stainless steel brakes is converted to hexavalent chromium. That's how they get that high number. All right, so um, let's just go back to slide number one. So again, I brought this up with CARB and APCD and I just, I, I still want to understand this low value of hex chrome. 
you have 6,700 pounds and only 0.7 is attributed. However, you look at those three other EJ communities, Southeast LA, East Coachella, and San Bernardino, like you have high traffic, have major sources of DPM, and they report several hundred to several thousand pounds of hex chrome. What is the purpose of the SERP, right? What is the purpose of this community? To identify air emissions that are causing health risks and hazards to the community and create a plan to reduce those emissions. There are two potential sources that can be high contributors of hexavalent chrome to the point to the port side communities that are not mentioned or may not be accounted for. So I, I'm, I, I point out to you the community, you need to know what are the sources of air pollution impacting your community, and in this case, hexavalent chrome, and in, and in the situation for mobile sources and automobile brake gear. Is it 0.7 pounds? Is it 10 pounds? Is it 100? Is it several thousand? This is the only point I need to make as you decide to make the vote, all right? I am a non-voting member. I just want to make sure you understand the facts. Thank you for your time and your consideration. And I now turn it back to the moderator for discussion. Okay, thanks. Um, I see for that. Uh, I don't know, Domingo or ARB, do you guys want to add anything there? Sharon, yeah, I don't know if, if, if there are any comments that you would like to make on this, on, on uh, the question on uh, from AC. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Domingo. And thank you, AC. Uh, we really do not, uh, you know, dispute anything that you're saying. We know that hex chrome contributions from mobile sources can be really high. It's just that we're limited by the data that we have at this point, at least uh, from a COPS perspective, we are still looking at, uh, you know, contract and studies to figure out, you know, how much break wear actually contributes to these kind of emissions. And those studies are not completed yet. So we do not have profiles that we can currently use to kind of estimate these as, you know, emissions, but we are not negating the fact that these emissions do not exist at all. We do know that these exist. It's just that we don't have the data to do it at this point. Um, definitely, you know, uh, as our data becomes more uh, available and as our contracts get wrapped up, our goal is to, um, update these speciation profiles and to use those accordingly to update the inventories and to show the contribution of uh, on-road sources to specific toxics, including hexavalent chromium. Um, up until then, we also are wanting, you know, you, you, know, you rightly brought up the South Coast uh, chart and the profiles that South Coast is using. Uh, we just have to, you know, talk with South Coast and figure out how they came up with those profiles and have a better understanding for whether these are profiles that we can use for all other communities as well. And uh, if we are able to make that determination, and I've already reached out to South Coast staff this afternoon, uh, we'll kind of keep looking at it and we'll make these uh, uh, the changes and the updates as necessary. But this is not to say that inventory information always changes. And on-road sources, everybody knows that these are, those are one of the primary contributors of uh, air pollution concerns and health risk in any community across the state. And the state is doing uh, a lot to kind of reduce these emissions. And as you would have seen from our uh, modeling projections, as well as from our emission projections, the diesel PM emissions and other on-road emissions are significantly going slow, down. Slow, slow, oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're kind of going down in future years. And uh, along with those, uh, some of the impacts from these toxics will also go down. But that's not to say that we should not have better estimates. Uh, emission inventories always changes. The data that we currently have are the best that we can use at this point, but we are very open to taking all the comments and making improvements. And um, you know, we'll, 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 we'll continue to work on this and give you guys an update on what, what, what's the best that we can do for the hex chrome estimates for on-road sources. Great. So my job as the facilitator is to take complicated information and try to simplify it and also to keep us moving. So I'm gonna pause here to summarize what I understand and that the SERP is a very complicated long technical document that has, I printed it, it's 200 pages plus of uh, lots of technical information that includes analysis of the emissions in the port side community, which we know are 
severe. And it's as, you know, I think everybody here wants to make sure that we have the best data to inform the decisions to come up with the best policies to reduce the air pollution in the severity of the air pollution in Portside community to improve the health of residents. So we have many different actors. We have the Air Resources Board. We have the local air district staff. And we have a very committed steering committee who um, we are blessed to have lots of technical expertise that are also always vetting everything that is coming through. And so what sounds like has happened is that in the process of vetting and making sure that every we've uh, dotted all of our I's and crossed all of our T's, that there has been an apparent uh, error that was noted um, in A or B related to hexavalent chromium. There's some concern about the numbers, the way they're being reported. Um, that is one piece of the puzzle. I think a reminder is that the SERP you are approving is a document that lays out a plan for five years that will be implemented, that will be complementing the emissions uh, monitoring plan that the, uh, the steering committee and the air district are implementing now. And that over time, there will be the steering committee will continue to exist for this reason, that over time, we will have more data, we will have better data, more local data from the local monitors, CARB will have more time to do the analyses, and we will be getting updates to the data and the emissions. And our hope is that as we move forward over the five years, those emissions are going to go down and that we're going to get more clarity on information. I heard that on the South Coast, the MATE study was mentioned. I know that study because I live in the South Coast and also I, that it, I follow air quality issues. And that was a study that was done over a long period of time studying air quality in the South Coast. So it sounds like maybe they have uh, that was specific to that district and that I think may provide them with, you know, more analysis, it sounds like. Um, so I just want to place this into context and to try to provide somewhat of a simplified summary. Um, and I want to thank the members who brought this up and raise that this is concern, but that, the, you know, the, it's one part of a larger SERP. Uh, so just to, to put that there. Um, so thank you, everybody. So with that, I want to go to our next speaker, which is Sarah. After Sarah, we'll have Filomena. And after Sarah, uh, Filomena, we'll have Montserrat. And if I can just ask people if you have more comments to raise your hands, that would be great. Thank you. Can, All can right, you go ahead, Sarah. Can I, can I, this is my Annie Luther. Can I interrupt for just a second, um, if, if I may? I know others uh, have some comments and questions, but I just wanted to mention something really quickly. First of all, uh, good evening, everyone. And it's really nice to to address this group again, it's been a while, but um, I appreciate the, the, the information that AC provided tonight, and we're definitely gonna take that back and, and look into it. But I also wanted to mention just for awareness that the information that was provided is from 2008, um, as it relates to hex chrome emissions from mobile sources. And so it is really old data. I realized that that's from a report that the district published a few years ago but the data is from 2008. So it's, it's, um, it could be outdated, but I appreciate we needed to be uh, making decisions based on data and we needed to be science-based and I appreciate the comments, but I just wanted to make sure that we are gonna carefully look into that. But for context, I wanna mention that the hex from emission data that was shown tonight for mobile sources is based on 2008 emissions. So thank you very much and sorry for the inter interruption. Thank you, Mayani. Great. So with that, we'll go to Sarah who, and, and Montserrat and Filomena who have been patiently waiting. So go ahead, Sarah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, and, and I'm not going to go too far deep into this Chrome stuff, but I, I myself, when I noticed that that number went from 30 pounds to two pounds, that seemed like good news, right? And so um, what I would also point out is that there's been a disconnect between what CARB has shown in their risk assessment and what's been in the SERP. So even when it was at 30 pounds, CARB was showing that hexavalent chrome was just 0.23% of the total risk. And I totally appreciate your point that this all needs to be data and science-based and that we are making our decisions based on this data. And, and I think that's a concern that we have is that the SERP has gone this far with erroneous data and we may have made statements in the SERP or uh, decisions on strategies with the understanding that hexavalent chrome was more of a risk driver than it is. I think probably the path forward would be, since there's so much uncertainty, and, and I can, I'm can i happy to make a motion on this, but perhaps we just need to notate the SERP that this data is uncertain at this point, and then take out any statements that uh, are going to identify 
you know, relative to other things that stationary sources are the major um, emission source of hex chrome and also probably um, delete any strategies that are around uh, reducing hexavalent chrome if it's not um, a major risk driver. So those would be my comments on that. Um, on a second point, I, I did notice that there's a lot of disconnect um, between the Appendix A. It, it looks kind of like, and, and frankly, the work appears like it maybe hasn't been proved very well. Um, there are, are things that are in tables nine and 10 where they reference that the background data is in Appendix A um, and that data just isn't in there. So there's some tax that are listed there that, that they say, go, go look at Appendix A and you'll find the data and it's not there. Um, that was things like um, manganese, acrolein, um, I have my notes here and I can send this along as a separate note, but it seems to me like if we're gonna identify something as being a risk or one of the quote top 10, um, then we should have the background data. Um, this, this process has been a little disappointing, I think in, in the sense that any time that we've noticed data inconsistencies, um, the data gets kind of clawed back on that. Um, I'll also point out that some of the tables in Appendix A need probably to be renumbered because we are duplicating table numbers in there. Um, and that although the hexavalent chrome data was removed from the current inventory it, uh, for area sources and non-stationary sources, it remained in future years. So in fact, what the SERP was showing was that we had very little hexavalent chrome now, but in, in 2025 and 2030, uh, that number will go up. So that, those are my comments and um, I'm, I'm happy to make a motion now, or if we wanna wait and hear from everybody else, we can do it at the end. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. We'll wait for, we'll take everyone's comments um, that's in the queue. So again, I'm gonna ask folks that if they have comments to um, raise their hand and also members of the public. And then when we finish with comments, we'll go to, um, We'll, we'll ask for motions for the vote. So um, great, Filomena, uh, do you still wanna go ahead with your comment? Yes, I actually had a question, but I got answered as, I, as this went on. And I just wanna comment on uh, with Sarah and AC, definitely if we could do a motion that does incorporate the source uh, data, um, you know, the um, take into account the data calculation errors, and then I'm not sure if anything's being mentioned as far as uh, for this last year, um, anything that we were exposed to in, in either Coronado Bridge or um, I-5 or even residuals from the 94 or residuals from the I-15, because we're surrounding from all points. Um, it reduced during this one year due to the COVID-19. So that's, that would be a considerable outlier. Okay. Um, all right. Did anybody want to respond to that from their district? We're good. Okay. Um, anything else please let me know? No, that was it. I was in agreement with AC and Sarah with okay. regards to the okay. motion with a uh, um, condition or, or gotcha. I, thank you. Thanks. Perfect. Okay, great. Um, with that, we'll go to Montserrat. And then a reminder that if you don't speak Spanish to uh, press in, uh, on the interpretation globe, I think it's press the English channel and then you will hear Frida translating um, on um comments. So go ahead and set up. Sí, pues mi comentario es en general sobre el SERP y este comité AB617. Yo pienso que es, un, es el resultado de lo que hemos venido diciendo por más de 40 años los residentes y las organizaciones de justicia ambiental que las comunidades portuarias hemos sido afectadas por las emisiones contaminantes provenientes del puerto, provenientes de los camiones y que nos han afectado la salud porque también um, hay métricas de hay, hay este... Sabemos que hay muchos niños afectados por asma, hay mucha gente afectada por cáncer. Entonces el tener todo esto en la mesa y poderlo ver así más claramente es, es mucho, mucho mejor que no, que, que no hubiera pasado este, eh, el surf, que no nos hubiéramos juntado. Es mucho trabajo, 
pero vale la pena. Así que mi comentario es que eh, pues doy gracias a todos los que estemos aquí reunidos para participar con, con cada una de estas ideas del CERP, pero también este, que debemos seguir, que debemos seguir porque pues esto es el resultado, pero todavía tenemos que ver cómo se va a aplicar y que dé un resultado seguro, certero. Eso es todo. Gracias. Muchas gracias, Montserrat, por tu comentario y también por tu esfuerzo. And thank you to all the steering committee members also for all that you have done here. Um, okay, I want to uh, make up an additional call. Is, does anybody have another comment or question that they would like to make? I'd ask that you uh, raise your virtual hand at this time. Um, we will call on folks that haven't gone first and then do a, 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 a recycle. And then also, if you are a member of the public and have a question or comment, I um, invite you to also raise your hand at this time, just so that we have an um, uh, idea of who wants to make a comment. Thank you. Um, so, and student committee members too, I think if you have, um, you know, now is the time to raise your hand to put you in the queue, please. Um, so go ahead, Ted. Oh, thank you. I'd like to say, you know, I'd be surprised if there wasn't some pushback from the business community tonight. So with the baseline knowledge established here with the comprehensive data on the violations and the enforcement actions, and then the path laid out to a more forward and clear and to the, to the more forward, to go forward, I'm sorry, with more clear cut actions, I'm very pleased with the document. Thank you for all of your work, Domingo and staff. Thank you, Daniela. Great, thank you, Ted. Okay, um, with that I saw Helen Haas come up and then we'll go to Jack and if there isn't another student committee member, of, oh, Sylvia and then Jack. And then after Jack, we'll go to members of the public, which we see, I see uh, Marsha Baverman's hand up. So um, go ahead, Sylvia, and then we'll go Jack and then we'll go Marsha. Thank you very much. Was somebody else going to talk before? Or? I don't think so. No? OK. Go ahead. Um, thank you. Um, I did want to, um, I wasn't going to write an outline really quick. But first of all, um, I want to thank each one of you, including businesses, community members, and staff, all the above, because this has not been an easy stack. Uh, an easy task. Um, we've gone above and beyond, including um, any uh, constructive comments and ideas. I truly appreciate that in every single min minute. As AC mentioned, I'm a very data analyst, I'm very analytical when it comes to things, and I appreciate uh, those issues bringing in. Um, but like I did mention, this SERP plan is the first of its kind. There's nothing before that. It may be similar, but it's not particular to our local community. Um, that's why I'm very appreciative of all the efforts that you have completed along with this. And um, I, in my opinion, I will approve the, the final for this SERP. I know there's going to be adjustments. It happens with the plan. Uh, and I truly appreciate, once again, even if this it gets approved, that everybody continues in promoting those thoughts and ideas, because that would definitely, uh, I'm already getting the chills providing that <laughs> in those comments, but all these efforts that you put it in um, is just going to make this whole plan and action being taken on a very positive level. So please... Do not go into the negativity, but see it as a very constructive opportunity. Thank you. Thank you um, for your comment. We appreciate that. Um, all right, next comment is from Helen. So Helen, go ahead and unmute, please. Can you Hi, sorry, unmuted problems, I guess. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, um, I, I am a science person and I do like data, but I also am a very practical person. Uh, and I do see the need of data and more data, 
but at the same time, I don't understand the refusing of older data. If we have a lack of data about hexachromin, and that's so important for cancer uh, avoidance, then perhaps we should look at a longer period. As you mentioned yourself, your experience from that uh, study was from a longer period of time. So maybe we do want to look at longer period of data that would help us make a better informed decision instead of trying to concentrate it on new data. Does that make any sense just in general? Uh, who are you directing that comment at? Is that Mayani or Domingo or? No, Ricard? it's just in general, in general, because we are talking about lack of data. Uh, I think we should, it's just a, a, a comment for the public in general, I think. We should consider long, longer periods of data since we don't have enough data about hexam hormone. And uh, hearing the comment from Mahiani to say that this data might be too old, well, maybe we do want to use older data because we don't have enough at the moment. And that was my question. I'm sorry, this is Sylvia. If we actually have updated data, that would be great. But if we don't, that's all we have at this point. And what happens is that since this is something new, this is what we have at this point. When we get to that period of time where we have enough data, then we definitely compare to that. And I think that's the excellent practice that we have the opportunity to be able to um, update any, any strategies or anything that needs to be done. Um, so I don't know at this point if the Air District or the Airbnb wanna chime in at one more time or I, it, it seems to me like an appropriate comment. I think that um, I, think I, I would appreciate some more technical expertise on this point. Yes, and, 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 and yes, uh, so basically just re reiterating that, that same point, um, I, I, I also appreciate you know, all the comments that we've received and, and I think that everything that we've heard um, will only make this plan much better. Right, because we'll ultimately have a, a, a more informed plan, whichever direction it might take. Uh, and just, just wanted to reassure um, everybody that we will be looking at, at the best data available that we have. Whenever that is produced, right now we are looking at the best data that we have right now. Um, and we're not close to looking at additional data. We're not close to looking at things differently but we have to take action based on, on the best available right now. Um, also just wanted to take the opportunity to make a quick comment too. Um, we've, you know, there's all this discussion about hex chromium and about um, mobile sources. And, and, and I think that, um, you know, there is a lot of emphasis on mobile sources in the plan. Uh, even our goals were rearranged to prioritize um, reduction of diesel uh, PM and electrification of trucks. So in that sense, um, you know, it's, it's, it's still pretty consistent in that way um, with, with, the, with the data and with the points that are being brought up. Um, so just, just wanted to mention that, that I want to take too much time because I know there's a lot more people that want to speak. Yes, thank you. And Jack, are you okay? I, meant to, I sent you a chat, but are you okay if I let Margarita go before since she hasn't spoken yet? Absolutely, and I think Marsha hasn't spoken either, so I'll-, I'll Yeah, wait. I'm gonna do steering committee and then um, Marsha, oh, okay. and then I'll, you're okay if I come back to you after Marsha? Sure, sure. Okay, thank you, Jack, appreciate that. Okay, um, go ahead, Margarita. Pase con su comentario, Margarita. And again, a reminder to be on English if you don't understand Spanish, so you, you can hear Frida's interpretation. Margarita, eh, se me perdió. Tiene que, eh, tiene que sacar eh, el mute, tiene que prender su micrófono. Buenas tardes, perdón. Ahí está, este, no le yo, eh, Quería decir un poquito, he oído todos los comentarios que han dicho, pero yo pienso que todo se empieza poco a poquito. O sea, claro que en un plan siempre va a haber errores, y, pero si no empezamos ya, o sea, lo, los errores se pueden arreglar. Pero es para ayuda de la comunidad. Entonces yo pienso que, que si empezamos ahorita, todo va a ir caminando poco a poco. Ningún plan es perfecto. Gracias, es todo. Gracias por este comentario, Margarita. Um, so again, Margarita, just reminding us that that's not, uh, that, you know, it's important to start off and even if the plan, no plan is perfect, but it's important to start. 
So um, great. So uh, Marcia, or, or Marcia, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. I'm gonna go ahead and allow you to talk and now you should be able to unmute and uh, go ahead with your question or comment. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Great, go ahead. Hi, my name is Marcia Baverman and I've been a, an environmental consultant since 1985. And I've worked with both um, multiple air districts in the state working on their attainment plans and their air quality management plans and the like. And I recognize that CARB may not have emission factors specific to San Diego, but in all the plans that I've ever worked on, when there's data that's not necessarily readily available, but there are other mechanisms for estimating emissions, we usually default back to, if nothing else, EPA, if, if the state doesn't have anything. And while I recognize that South Coast has a lot of data and you may say, well, it's not representative, it's very representative in industrial urbanized area. So one would think that it would be a good surrogate until you actually have data. And if not, you know, EPA, one document just in a quick Google from EPA is called Estimation of Mobile Source Air Toxic Emissions and Application in Planning and Programs. So one would think that you could at least default back to some sort of surrogate as a placeholder, primarily because when you are putting together a statistical percentage contribution, having a major source at very underrepresented grossly misrepresents the statistics presented in a document where you're making decisions on how you're going to be controlling emissions based on source contribution. So at a minimum, I would think that you would footnote the table that says that there's something wrong with that data and that decisions shouldn't be made on it or put in a surrogate that is your best estimation at the time and footnote the table that that's not an actual um, emission inventory, but a projected estimated emission inventory. It, it's done regularly in other plans. And to say that you have no data and not represent it is very deceptive. Thank you. Okay, and I, I do just wanna um, thank you for that comment. But I, I do wanna point out that I don't think there is any deception or anybody's trying to deceive anyone. I think that we've trying to, uh, I think this has been a very transparent process. And I think that this conversation is a evidence of that. And I do wanna recognize all of the hard work everyone has put into this. And I do wanna, I think, appreciate the folks who brought this co comment to the attention before our meeting and also appreciate the, the promptness and the swiftness with which ARB and APCD listened to this. And I think that we all remember that we all have best intentions and that our goal that brings us all to the steering committee is improving the air quality in the, in the, the port side community. And so, um, you know, I, I do want to just maintain that level of um, respect for the effort that everybody has put in the grain of sand. Everybody has contributed to this effort um, and highlight that this conversation is a testament to the to the transparency that that is, uh, I think, uh, we have been committed to and that have carried out to a process. So with that, I'm going to call on Jack. I last call for steering committee comments. Um, I do want to point out that Domingo still has a couple of slides after this related uh, back to the SERP goals. Um, and then the next item on the agenda after Domingo's presentation is um, is in fact voting on the SERP. Um, for the comments, or for the item on um, on the next item, we are going to use Mentimeter again. So just encouraging folks that if you have, if you used your cell phone last time for Mentimeter and that worked well for you, please have your cell phone handy. Um, and then uh, if you have, um, or if you did your computer, just to be ready for that. So I do see that Sarah um, has her hand up. So um, I will take Jack and Sarah, and then if we can uh, agree to let Domingo go ahead with his presentation and then um, and, and then move on. Does, does that sound okay? All right, great. Go ahead, um, Jack, and then, um, Thank you, Daniela. Um, I, listening to um, all the comments tonight, I think that, quite frankly, what Sarah uh, was describing um, in terms of a path forward makes an awful lot of sense. It's a it's a responsible scientific approach, um, yet it recognizes that we may not have all the data. Maybe somebody else has some of the data. We just need to go get it. But um, uh, we could do better in terms of making sure that we've properly assessed the sources of emissions out there. So really just for the record tonight, what I wanna do, I'm gonna leave that up, whatever she wants to do with that comment and let her follow up on it. But what I wanted to raise for the, for the record are three things um, on page 58, um, the, and, and Sarah did mention mangan manganese as one of those that had shown significant increases. There's also nickel 
um, in, in that table on page 58 that shows the same thing. And so um, I would ask for uh, um, additional look at that and to, to assess why or where that came from. Um, page 64, um, there um, the figure 22, um, there's a cable on non-cancer risk. And, and my question um, for later is, are these actions or goals in the SERP that, are there actions or goals in the SERP that actually address non-cancer risk? Uh, just, just for clarification. And then finally, um, on page 80, there begins a whole series of graphs uh, with regard to pollutants. And I think it would be extremely helpful. I mean, the information is just kind of put out there. I don't know what that means. Um, is it bad? Is it good? Is it approaching bad? Um, the levels of pollutants that are graphed in each of those. So what I wanted to ask, um, if we could have those, uh, some information, whether it's from CARB or EPA, um, to indicate to us what is, what is safe, what is a moderate risk, what's a serious risk, what do those graphs actually represent for someone who lives in the Portside community um, every day? Um, I think that would be consistent with uh, the second bullet of goal A2 that you referred to earlier tonight, uh, Domingo, with the, the calls for providing the safety ranges for each air contaminant. I think this would help us understand what those um, what those graphs really mean uh, for the community. So uh, just for the record, I'd like to ask that those be, we recognize right. that we, however we go forward tonight, we're gonna address those issues um, as we do. Great, Jack, thank you. Thank you. Um, go, ahead, go ahead, Sarah. Yeah, um, and, and I'm, I just wanted to circle back to whether this is the appropriate time to sort of make that motion about- No. Okay. <laughs> it's right. not. So, um, so Domingo still has slides to do, and then we, and it, so it's his presentation is one item, and the next item on the agenda is actually to vote on the SERP because um, his next item is to prioritize the goals for the SERP. So, there, that way, we do want to address that um, before we call for a vote. Um, no so. worries. It's just that, that, you, that you said before the next thing was to vote on the SERP. So, after Domingo, yes. Sorry, I had, I, I got ahead of myself. Sorry, Sarah. Thank you. Um, okay, so Domingo, I think with that, we'll go back to you and Joanny. Do you want to bring up the next slides then from Domingo's presentation? Presentation. And um, and again, we're going to use Mentimeter. So if you want to, however you used it last time and it worked for you, please do that again. Um, here is the code on the screen. Um, and Joanny, I don't know if you want to provide instructions here because you're really the this expert on this. Yes. Um, so same as last time, you can just open up a browser either on your phone or on your laptop and enter the code 41661251. And let me see. I just also dropped the link that should take you directly to um, in the chat. Great, thank you. So we'll give folks a minute. You can either uh, click on the link in the chat or you can go to menti.com, M-E-N-T-I.com. Okay, and the first question Domingo wants to ask is, do you have a clear understanding of the goals of the SERP and that the goals are aspirational and not enforceable? And do you wanna add anything to that, Domingo? Um, not, I mean, I, I think that we've spoken about the goals <laughs> a lot already, but I mainly wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, that folks understood, um, you know, the, the, the fact that these goals are set as a vision for the community and also that, you know, we're, we don't have uh, authority to enforce these goals. So some of these things uh, we might be able to accomplish, some of them we might not be able to accomplish. Uh, nevertheless, that's the direction where the community would like to go. And I just wanted to make sure that folks understood that and to provide any clarification, uh, if anybody has any, any pending questions, I see a couple of no's there. Joanny, uh, can, you put, can you put the code in? Thank you. Oh, thank you, Sandy. Thank you. Okay, so we just put the code in. So if you didn't have the code now, you can um, come in, give you that extra time. I think the voting is still open. Repeat the question, please. So do the question. Have, oh, go ahead, Domingo. So the question is: Do you have a clear understanding of the goals of the SERP, and that the goals are aspirational and not enforceable? And 
of the two folks that answered no, are, would anybody like to kind of share what, what they're still unclear on or? Um... I can share my understanding and Domingo, you can correct my understanding, but I believe my understanding is, is that the SERP is a document that sent each government agency has a different jurisdiction and it is the jurisdiction of the Air Pollution Control District, which convenes the steering committee to regulate um, air pollution in their district, uh, specific to stationary sources and, and uh, sources within their jurisdiction. And that the SERP also includes actions by other government agencies, such as SANDAG or City of San Diego or National City. And therefore, um, there are some uh, strategies and goals. The goals that have been laid out as what we want the SERP to achieve are not necessarily enforceable solely by the air districts. The air district cannot force the national city to do anything, but that this is a cooperative, collaborative process. And that's why the goals have been kind of worked on together and that this is our aspiration of and what we want for, uh, what we want for Port Said community and is represented in this document. Well, thank you, Daniela. I think that's, that's uh, really good. What I would add to that is that even for goals that are identified for areas where the district would have enforcement authority, again, those are still mm -hmm. goals, right? Those are not necessarily, those are not rules that we have adopted. So what we have authority over is to enforce any rules that are under our purview as a district. And the same, you know, so, so it, even, if, even if there are goals specific to, um, you know, in this case, there's a goal for cancer risk reduction. Right, we can only enforce what the regulate, what the rules uh, say about um, risk reduction thresholds, etc. So the goals are really intended for, uh, you know, to inform our advocacy efforts, for example, and, and to really reflect the direction where the community wants to move. But uh, yeah, that's the only thing that I would add to to your comments. But thank you for for um, capturing that. Hopefully that helps to uh, the folks who answered no on their questions. And if you don't feel comfortable, um, you know, asking the question now, feel free to um, send me an email um, so that we can have the conversation or, or I may be able to provide any, any clarification. So I'll just put my email on the chat for everybody to see. Great. And with that, Johnny, if you could bring up the next question. So if everyone can keep Menti open. Um, the next question uh, to everyone is, do you support the proposed reordering or prioritization of the goals? And um, this was a, a document that was sent out to the uh, steering committee earlier this week by Domingo. Um, so if, again, if you can and, log in, yes. And, and, I, and I can briefly just uh, capture overall what that reordering um, reflected, which was to prioritize uh, the goals that had to do with um, reduction of diesel particulate matter and also truck electrification, then followed by the ones uh, related to cancer risk reduction uh, goals. And then after that, um, implementation of uh, uh, land use strategies for uh, truck diversion and also uh, urban greening. Great, and here I'm seeing that we have um, a consensus that yes, people are, are supportive of the, of the reordering. Great, so I think if we go to the next question then, I believe there's four. Uh, here's kind of like a fun question. <laughs> um, what did you enjoy from the SERP development process? And I think this is open-ended, is that right, Joanny? So people can just type whatever they want. Yes. And is, and there, is there a word limit? Uh, I think it's 250 characters, so just a short phrase. Just a short phrase. And you can also use the chat box if you're unable to get into Mentee. So thank you, Janice, for sharing uh, your thought in the chat, which is hearing the community voice. nice to focus on things we like. The community involvement and comments, um, stakeholder input and community input, working with residents on strategies and solutions, which is nice to have constructive discussions, um, acknowledging that those don't always happen. So it's great that this is a space for that. Um, learning the language to articulate our concerns, hearing from community residents, uh, working with the community to develop a plan that reflects their lived experiences, hearing about some of the early successes in seeing resident involvement, the ability to have constructive discussion and the transparency, the transparency, seeing resident input reflected in the document, translation in Spanish, and hard work given to data collection, and working directly with local residents, exclamation point. Um, 
identification of solutions to pollution issues, uh, working on an effort to make my community safe, helping the district understand more about what risks are affecting the community and which ones are not. This is a great list. Um, and again, invite folks if you're unable to use the chat to, to uh, I mean, to use the chat if you're unable to log into Menti. And again, in Spanish, um, I'll read it in Spanish and then I'll read it in English. Uh, me gustó que haya alguien que empiece a pensar a cambiar esta fea contaminación. I like that there are people working to think on how to change this ugly contamination or pollution. Um, seeing consistent dedication from APCD and meeting facilitators to engage in meaningful conversations and explain complex concepts and incredible leadership. Um, helping the district understand more about what risks are affecting the community and which ones are not. Oh, I think I already said that one, right? Great. Well, or do we have any more in the queue? Not, that's a great list. And I think that's a nod to the, on the leadership. I think that's everybody here that has participated in many of the loyal public members of the public who have consistently attended. We know who you are. <laughs> um, and involvement of the community and understanding where the risks to air quality are coming from, which is a key part of this process. Um, wonderful. Well, thank you all for sharing that, that those positive thoughts. And then is there one more question, Joanny? The last question is, what could we have improved in the SERP development process? Um, can always do better. Can't let perfect be the enemy or of good, but um, always things that could have been improved. So short phrases, 250 characters. Or anything that, that we didn't do that you would, would have liked um, to see as part of the, as part of the process. And again, if you're unable to use Menti for some reason, you can use the chat. Earlier meeting time. Okay, yeah, you can use the chat. Mari, come. Oh, here we go. Um, more air sampling data for sampling stations, uh, bringing concerns and questions early on in the process, getting agencies involved more deeply earlier in the process, a follow-up presentation on the technology coming online, more precise metrics. So precision, more data, more diverse representation from the community, more information sharing in regards to the implementation phase of the SERP, what comes next. That will come in at the July meeting. That's what will be the focus of the July meeting. Um, show the community concrete examples of the solutions. Great, and this is good to have because um, the work of the steering committee continues um, uh, beyond the SERP adoption. Adoption is just one piece in implementation. So, and the steering committee will continue to convene to monitor that. And thank you, Janice, for saying hearing the community voice and acknowledging Kumeyai and including tribal leaders and involvement of small business representatives. And something that I wanted to mention to Daniela, if I may, uh, is please always feel free to provide this type of feedback. Uh, as you mentioned, the, the steering committee will continue to meet. This is this is an ongoing process, and even though we're we're hitting a, a, an important milestone here, um, our work continues, so our opportunities to improve our process also continues. Um, so always feel free to reach out to us uh, with any uh, ideas or observations that we need to address. Uh, we're definitely open to that, and and. And that's, you know, one of our main goals is to, to serve um, in the best way possible. So uh, thank you for all your feed, feedback and input. Great. And we have some more here. Creating a baseline of knowledge early on for the steering committee, and residents, and resources and presentations. Yeah. I'm sure. I went to, speaking. and then I went oh, to. Uh, and I'm going to um, remind if you're not speaking to, to try to make sure you're on mute. Um, greater reliance on monitoring information, and we will get more monitoring from the monitors as time passes, less reliance on emission estimates, document control measures, being thoughtful how to simplify technical during language during presentations and not overpack the agenda. And we've tried and we have not been perfect at that, so yeah, we'll continue. Great, okay, well, uh, oh, uh, this is an enormous challenge for the district staff in the middle of the numerous personnel changes. Thank you for your efforts. Yes, uh, thank you. And a whole new board, a whole new governing board that will approve this. So um, yes, thank you for recognizing that. Wonderful. Well, um, I think we'll close out that question and comments can continue to come to Domingo. And now I believe, unless there's any additional, unless we have an additional question or comment, um, we now come to the point um, item 
uh, on the agenda item four, where we're gonna call for a vote. Or actually, next steps, Boningo, do you wanna, next steps real quick? I, I believe I covered that. Oh, you covered that. Slide. Yeah, I so. covered that already. So maybe we can go to Sarah for her uh, motion. Yeah. So, well, first let's do this. Oh. Um, first let's, uh, I wanna just do a quick reminder. Some folks have not voted, I think as part of the steering committee yet. And I do just wanna, because this is an important vote, just remember that our charter guides the voting process. This is a charter voted on and approved by and developed by, with input by the steering committee. So um, it's a majority vote and we uh, ask that somebody makes a motion and that somebody seconds that motion. And then I will call for a vote. We have a quorum today. I will bring up, a, uh, I will share my screen and I will bring up a list of the roll call from today and our official voting document. And I will mark your vote. I will call your name. I will do a roll call vote and I will call on each of your names for your vote. Um, it is possible to have multiple motions. Um, it is a majority. Um, so uh, whatever, uh, you know, uh, decisions are made by a majority vote, which was uh, 50 plus one. So are there any questions about the voting process before we start? Okay, I'm going to remove our spotlights and put up the gallery. And then I will, um, here, I'll move, remove your spotlight too, um, great. I will call um, uh, on the string committee members uh, to make a motion. Um, and I know Sarah indicated her intent to make a motion, so Sarah. Thank you, Daniela. Um, I would like to uh, move that we amend the SERP to include notation indicating the uncertainty in the chromium, X chromium data, um, and also um, taking out the comment on page 63 of, of chapter three um, that says that consistent with the risk information available as they are led by DPM, hexavalent chrome, benzene, and 1,3-butadiene, I would recommend that that be reordered um, to be DPM, benzene, and 1,3-butadiene. I believe that hexavalent chrome should be taken out of there until we know whether it is um, a, a major contributor or not. Um. Okay, so we will get this very technical, <laughs> we'll get the very, we'll, uh, when the notes will capture all this, but the emotion again as a summary is to uh, amend the SERP to include a notation uh, citing the uncertainty of the data specific to hexavalent chromium and with uh, an edit on page 63 chapter of chapter three, um, which would strike hexavalent chromium from that sentence and that would reorder the pollutants listed at, to be DPM, benzene, and the one I can't remember how to pronounce. <laughs> no problem. Um, I see Ted has his hand up. Yes, I'm curious if this is actually a motion to uh, approve the SERP with the amendment because Sarah did not mention the word approve. You took the question right from my mouth. Um, Sarah, I was going to ask you the same thing. Um, do you want to include uh, approval of the SERP contingent on that uh, amendment? Yes, thank you. Okay, great. So I, let's count it a, a, a joint motion by <laughs> by Ted and Sarah <laughs> to approve the SERP uh, no, with an amendment. Excuse me. No, it's her motion. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks, Ted. Okay. Yeah, it's her, her motion. Sarah is making a motion then to approve the SERP with an amendment um, as stated. Um, is there anybody that would like to second that motion or is there anyone that would like to put forth another, another motion? This is Jack, unless Ted wants to second that, I'll second it. Okay, um, so we have a motion by Sarah and with a second by Jack. Um, and if anybody needs me to uh, repeat that, I can. And I have a hand from Joy Williams, go ahead, Joy. Uh, yeah, you indicated it would be acceptable to put forward alternative motions at this time. I believe that is correct. Okay, I, I would make a motion to approve the SERP uh, in its current form. Okay. I make, I second that. <laughs> Who is that? I'm sorry. Sorry, this is Janice. I second to keep it in its current form. Okay. Um, and this is... Um, I second that it also keeps on the first form. Okay, so we have a third on that. Who is that last person? Sorry. Me, Ashley. Okay, yes. Okay, so I think we need to vote on each um, 
I think the proper protocol would be to we have two motions which uh, with uh, we have two motions with uh, seconds and so we should I, I would believe the appropriate protocol would be to vote on each of those motions. Um, so unless anyone has any concerns with that or uh, would like to okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I, I'm gonna ask for one second so I can get organized here on my um, screen and I'm going to uh, update the voting sheet. Daniela, sorry, I had my hand raised, but I was gonna just jump in real quick. Can you repeat you the second change from the first motion. I can't, I, I thought there was a removal of something on page 63, but I'm not seeing it mentioned on page 63. Sarah, can I ask you to do that since that was yours? Will I update? Yeah, um, it, I had it on um, chapter three, page oh, 63. Page 63? Yeah. Not moving any reference to hexavalent chromium. I'm not seeing that on page 63. I, it might be that one of us is looking at the red line strikeout version and the other one is looking at the non struck out version. Got it. Can you confirm which one you're mentioning, um, Sarah? I, I believe I'm looking at the struck out version. Yeah, so I pulled up the one that's on the website currently. The one that's right. Final. And the one that, that is on the website does not have hexavalent chromium? It's um, on page 63, there's a chart of Perkins Elementary School PM 2.5 24 hour design value by calculated year. So if we know where that. Oh, I see it. Okay. Yeah, where, where the hexavalent chromium this is. Listed. This is Dave from Carbon, just to help. I think it's the last paragraph prior to the beginning of chapter four. Do you know what page that is, Dave? Sorry, I'm just trying to get there. I uh, see, I have the strike out of the line version open myself, <laughs> so I apologize. <laughs> no. <laughs> you look for table 11, it's under table 11. Under table 11, okay. It's the last paragraph under table 11. Okay. It's okay. page 59. This is Lilian. <laughs> on, on what's on the PDF that's based, it's the based on the limited risk information currently available. Is that the paragraph? Yeah. It's chapter three and what, what is the table reference on the strikeout version? Is it in the summary or is it in? It's, it's in the, it's in the, yeah. So it's in chapter three and it's right after table 11. Um, and it's, if you don't have the strikeout version it's page 59. It's, a, it's, it's in essence the last paragraph of chapter three. Okay, great, thank you. And, so we'll and that. they wanted to eliminate uh, hexavalent chromium, chromium out of the language. Yes, and reorder uh, the, the you know, or at, at minimum reorder it to be in the uh, percentage of pollutants that are, that are consistent. I understand you. Yeah. yeah, you were not clear, Sarah. Can you speak closer? Yeah, it, at minimum, it should be reordered to reflect the percentage that is shown in the tables, which is Two of those pollutants have have more percentages than hexavalent chrome, even with the uncertainty of the data. Just just to be clear, Sarah, since I kind of have you here, the we're, we don't want to say that hexavalent chromium isn't a contributing factor to cancer risk in the port side, right? You're no, the sentence reads right now that is led by DPM right. and hexavalent chrome then benzene, and then 1,3-butadiene. One, one but hexavalent chrome is 2% of the risk, and those other two pollutants are 4% of the risk. So if you're, if you're trying to say that these things lead the risk, you should go in the order that they are presented. So that's why diesel particulate matter, which is 84% of the risk, is the first thing. Um, so thank you. And Joy is mentioning in the chat that there's already a disclaimer based on this uh, unlimited information um, in the SERP. And thank you for mentioning that disclaimer, Joy, um, Sylvia replied. Okay, great, thank you all. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen and I am going to um, call for a vote on each of the, each of the motions, sorry, bear with me. Um, 
So you should each see uh, our official voting attendance and voting sheet. Um, I'm going to call on everybody whose name is in bold who's here, unless you're an alternate. Um, and we did have an I so and we did have some um, steering committee members who did join uh, later in the meeting. Um, so we'll call on you. Um, so the, we'll call for the vote first on the motion by Sarah, which was seconded by Jack, which is to approve the SERP with an amendment to uh, notate uncertainty um, on the data related to hexavalent chromium and to reorder the comments on chapter three, page 59 of the, not, of the final SERP um, that and to reorder the contaminants by risk. And to remove, and to remove- And to remove uh, hexavalent chromium. Thank you for that clarification. Um, okay, so we will take a vote first on this motion. So um, I will call you in the order that your name appears. So uh, Ashley? Um, no. Ashley, no, sorry. Okay, uh, Jack? Monger? Yes, yes. Yes, and Joanny, I'm going to ask you uh, if you could just keep track of the numbers while I of the nos and the yeses while I drop them down here, please. Thank you, um, Sarah. Yes. Sorry for my typing. Okay, uh, Sandy Nadanko, I believe you're here now, right? Yes, I'm here. No. No. Okay, Elisa Arias from Sandeb. No. Um, Joy Williams from EHC. No. Um, Martin Reeder is not here, I believe so. So um, we'll go to his alternate, David Welch from the City of National City. Yes. Okay, Roman Partido Lopez. No. No. Stephanie Yoon. No. No. Um, Jose Marquez Chavez. And you can also choose to abstain. Um, Jose, are you still no. with us? No. Yes. Okay. No. Okay. Um, all right. And just a reminder to everybody that the Navy, I will not be calling on because they are a non-voting member. Um, Dinah Willier? Yes. Yes. Um, Filomena Marino? And I, uh, hold on, I can't read the comments. Uh, can so, somebody read the comments in the chat to me, sorry. Or can they, uh, we'll wait till the roll call vote is done. Philomena? No se escucha. Some people are not able to hear on the Spanish channel. Um, okay. Okay, ya escuché. Ya, ahora sí, voto por Choy. Okay, no, cuando llame su nombre. Um, Philomena, are you still with okay, us? Okay, perdón, es que no, no escucho. Okay, so is Filomena still with us? Joanny, I can't see the, can you help me? Joanny, can you tell me if Filomena is here or not? No, Filomena is bilingüe. No. She's not in the meeting anymore. Okay, no. so she's not here, so, okay. Um, Janice Luna Reynoso? No, no, okay. thank you. Ted Gottschalk? No. Hillary is not here, is that correct? Still not here, great. Alicia, como vota, si o no? Joy. Huh? Vota a favor o en contra de esta moción? Alicia? No se oye. No se oye todavía? ¿Se me escucha? Um, sí, sí la escucho. Está votando oh, sí o favor. Perdón, sí o no? No te escucha. Are, are, are. Alicia, tienes que votar sí o no. Oh, sí, sí, es perdón, no, es no ahí de que si esta es sí, por la es, de Sara. Es, perdón, es que no se escucha, no, no entiendo, no entiendo lo que están diciendo. ¿En qué canal está? ¿No me escuchan? Sí, eh, la moción es, Yo esta sí moción te es. Escucho, ¿Me escuchas? Sí, ya te escuché. Ok, no, es no. Um, Domingo, can you, okay. no sé. ¿Sí me sí, escuchas? Creo. Sí, creo, creo, que está, creo que está diciendo Joy. Lo que yo entiendo es que ella vota a favor de la moción de Joy. ¿No se me escuchas? Sí, sí te escucho, no. pero no sé si los demás. Digo, no ¿Can you go escuchan? into the Spanish okay, channel no. and. Diles tú. Estoy en español. Sí, Alicia, Alicia, ¿me escucha? Sí, ya lo escucho. 
Ah, ok, nada pero más para pierde, explicarle. Se pierde el sonido de repente, entonces no los escucho. Sí, perdón, brevemente para explicarle. No, sí, están no están votando ahorita sí o no a, eh, a favor de la moción que hizo Sarah. Si usted quiere apoyar la moción que hizo Sarah, entonces vote sí. Si no quiere apoyar a la moción que hizo Sarah, entonces vote no. Espero que me escuchen. No. Ok, gracias. Sí, la escuchamos. Margarita Moreno. No. Ok, gracias. Naomi Sánchez, ¿estás aquí? Naomi está aquí. Ok. Um, Vanessa Contreras, you're not here. Um, Salvador Abrica. No. No. Uh, Montserrat Hernández. No. No. Silvia Calzada. No. No. Ashley Valentín González. No. No. Josephine Talamantes. No. No. And Maritza García. No. No. Okay, so I believe that motion does not pass. Um, and let me take a moment before we go to the next one to see you've the chat. You've gotten, uh, Filomena said that she, her call was dropped. Uh, great, Filomena. So thank you for joining us again. Thank you and Josephine for reading that to me. Uh, the motion that we just took a vote on was the motion by Sarah to vote to approve the SERP with an amendment noting the uncertainty in the data related specifically to hexavalent chromium data with an edit on page 59 of chapter three to um, reorder the pollutants in order of risk and to delete a hexavalent chromium from that um, sentence. Um, you can go ahead and if you can speak unmute, uh, share, cast your vote yes or no in that motion. There's another motion, I don't know at what point you dropped off, there's another motion on the table um, that we'll take the vote on next to uh, approve the SERP as is with no edits. Filomena, were you able to hear that? Um, if you want to, Filomena, enter your vote into the chat. Okay, um, we can come back. I, I think even if she votes yes, that motion would not pass. Um, Joanna, can you give me what the numbers were? Yeah, it's 17 no, four yes. Um, uh, she, she wrote in the chat, uh, Daniela. Oh, okay, what did she write? Not in favor. Not in favor. Okay, so that would be 18 no? Yes. And how many for favor? Four. Four, thank you. Okay, so now they'll take a vote on the next motion, which was put forth by Joy, which is to approve the SERP as is. And so Diana, again- I'm, yeah. I'm sorry, if I may, just because the way of, uh, of how that mo motion is set up uh, to approve the SERP as is, I want to make sure that, um, you know, to update folks that we're still incorporating some of the updated data that CARB provided on the appendices uh, tables. So some of those numbers were still adjusting to reflect the latest data that we have. So um, just wanted to caveat that motion with that. Okay, great. But as far as, as far as the content of the SERP and the, and the language, um, it's, it's, it's pretty much done. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, okay, um, so I'm going to do the vote again and hopefully we can go faster this time. So, um, Ashley Rocia Tremonti? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, Jack Monger? No. No. Uh, Sarah Giobi? No. Uh, Sandy Naranjo? Yes. Yes. Uh, Elisa Arias? Yes. Yes. Um, Joy Williams? Yes. Uh, David Welch? Yes. Yes. Uh, Roman Partido Lopez? Yes. Yes. Uh, Stephanie Yoon? Yes. yes. Uh, Jose Marquez Chavez? Yes. What was that? Yes. Yes. Okay. That was yes, right? I'm sorry, it's muffled. Yes. Okay, okay sorry. Dina Willier. Um, I'll just, I'll say yes. Okay. Um, Filomena Marino. And you can chat it into the chat box and I will wait for your reply. If that's, someone can just tell me what she chats. Um, Janice Luna Reynoso. Yes. Yes. Uh, Ted Gotchak. Yes. Yes. Uh, Filomena said yes. Filomena said yes. Thank you. I appreciate the help guys. Alicia Sanchez. 
puede escuchar, Alicia? Ahora no estamos. Que me digan, sí. ¿Sí? Yes, she said yes. Okay. Sí. Mar Margarita Moreno. Sí. Okay, Naomi is still not here. Vanessa is still not here. Salvador. Yes. Yes. Uh, Montserrat. Sí. I know how to spell yes, I promise. Yes. Okay. Uh, Silvia Calzada. Yes. Okay, yes. Um, Ashley Valentin Gonzalez. Yes. Uh, Josephine Talamantes. Yes. Yes. And Marisa Garcia. Yes. Great. And Johnny, how many? Can you give me the totals? Yes. Two no and 20 in favor. 20 in favor. So that motion passes. So um, we have just voted to approve the SERP as is with a note from Domingo that, you know, data will continue to be updated for. Um, for uh, clarity and certainty. So I wanna uh, congratulate everybody and I wanna thank everyone for the very thoughtful and uh, provocative conversation that we had today. And that just note that I think it goes to the transparency and accountability that we're all committed to in this process. Um, so with that, the um, next item on the agenda, there's a few more items on the agenda to update. We're also at eight o'clock. So I wanna just poll people if you wanna go for 15 more minutes or if we want to, um, if, if we can hold the update, Nick and Kathy for net, for July. Uh, I'm I'm fine with that. If if the if the committee would would like that, I'm I'm fine with that. And I think that works out well. We had a presentation for you, but that has to be held off till July, anyways. And so, um, if folks are okay with that, we can move on that, and we can just call for updates. I know that we have uh, two updates. Uh, people from the public that requested to make a comment, and I think also Commissioner Naranjo um, had made a comment. So I think I'll take the first comment is Kathy Hacker, who's an attendee, um, who wanted to make a request for a letter of support from the, the steering committee for the July meeting. So Kathy, you can unmute yourself and go ahead with your comment. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, and I believe, did you make a slide? No, did you send me a presentation? Nope. Okay, great, go ahead. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I'm Kathy Hacker, and um, I work as an environmental educator with a company called BCK Programs. We are a small education consulting firm based out of North County, and we work in several school districts, mainly in San Diego County. Thank you for allowing me to speak at this meeting. This was a really <laughs> heavy meeting so far, and <laughs> my topic is going to be much lighter, I promise. Um, I'm here tonight to share a program that we are partner partnering with, with Mundo Gardens on, and to request a letter of support for a grant we are writing to fund our project. A little bit of background, since 2018, we have been working in the National School District, collaborating with staff and students to improve the waste diversion rate, primarily by starting and implementing carton recycling at the schools. Think of all the little um, milk and juice cartons. And by the end of our contract as a district, we were able to divert almost 2 million cartons from the landfill each year. At BCK, we not only recognize the need for more environmental and sustainability programs in national city schools, but we also thoroughly enjoy working with the students. I know teachers aren't supposed to play favorites, but national city students are definitely my favorite. And so we've been working hard to try and find ways to bring more programming to national city. So we're partnering with Mundo Gardens to apply for an environmental justice grant from Cal EPA. We are proposing to implement a year long education program focused around climate change called the Climate Action Internship. And we're proposing to do the program in two schools, Kimball Elementary and El Toyon. Kimball is located in the Portside community and our program includes an air quality component. Some specific outcomes direct, directly related to the steering committee's mission include a reduction in transportation em emissions at the school site through walk and bike to school campaigns and additional outreach for the Branch Out San Diego tree planting campaign to increase tree canopy. We like to highlight the fact that our student interns perform the same tasks and duties as their professional counterparts and they do this by conducting audits on their school campuses or at home, depending on the topic. They analyze their data and come up with solutions to address the problem. 
And then they set out to implement their solutions, which usually take the form of educational campaigns to get the word out to their school community. And as I've been listening in on this meeting tonight, this process, I think you guys have just already been through this thing and we kind of bring, bring down the same thing into um, an elementary school level. So we have observed students uh, in National City. Oh, great. Um, Kathy, I don't want to be rude, um, but we do have people, we, our meeting doesn't go end at eight usually and people have childcare need to leave um, and our translator needs to leave, as interpreter needs to leave as well. So um, I think if you don't, it sounds like a great program to, to provide the steering committee. Um, we're going to send a letter that Kathy pre prepared out to you all tomorrow for review and we'll bring this item to a vote for July if that's okay and that's in time for the deadline um, for their grant application. So. Um, is, was there anything else other than that you wanted to add to end, Kathy? Sorry to be so rude. No, thank you so much. Yeah, as you mentioned, it was a heavy meeting. So, um, okay, the, so we'll do that. And then uh, Lydia, I know that you had wanted to share your slide. Um, would you like to go next? Or, um, and if, you, if I would ask just if you could be brief again, or if you would like, we could, you can go ahead in, in July if you want, but we could go now if you like, it's up to you. And you should be able to unmute yourself. Yes. Great. Um, I, I'm willing to call next month if that's easier for everyone. I can't hear you. You're very muffled. If you can speak more clearly and louder into your I, microphone. I, I, there we go. I think we'll, we'll probably have to wait until next month. Wait till next month. Okay, thank you. I'm so sorry for that. I appreciate that, um, that um, especially since we're losing our interpreter. And then um, Larry, would you like to go ahead and, and Sandy, I know that you had mentioned that the port had a comment or can you guys also wait till July? Uh, Larry could be real quick. Go ahead, Larry. Yeah, I'll be very brief. Um, just, just a couple of things. One, congratulations, everyone, for approving the SERP. It's an awesome milestone. Very, very happy to be part of it. Um, on that note, um, I did want to share um, really quickly. I'll share a screen here. Um, hopefully, you guys can see that. Um, but basically, I just wanted to update the... Uh, can, can everyone see my screen? No. No. Uh-huh. And we have oh, lost interpretation. We, uh -huh. Um about now, can people see my yeah. screen? Yes. So, so briefly, I just wanted to let folks know that uh, as the SERP continues to move down the process identified here in the first row, um, we're also gonna be moving forward with the Ports Maritime Clean Air Strategy. Um, so right now, our goal is to check in with our Board of Port Commissioners on July 13th and put a revised Maritime Clean Air Strategy out for public review uh, in the month of August. Um, with the goal, of course, of uh, revising it in September and bringing it to our board for final approval in October. Um, so Larry, we've lost our interpreter, so I'm just going to translate what you said. Oh, please, um, please, if, thank if, you said. If everyone can hear, uh, and Giovanni, don't make me the interpreter, just hold on. Um, so, eh, solo quiero explicar, que Larry, que eh, el, el, el plan para mejorar el aire del, del puerto se está haciendo algunos cambios ahora y se, se va a, a votar, tomar un voto en el. La, eh, los comisionados del, del puerto van a tomar un voto en agosto y la idea es, eh, es oh, no, que lo van a, en agosto a abrir para más revisión del público, para revisar los cambios que se, se han hecho y, y luego que en octubre van a, a ponerlo para un voto. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Daniela. Then um, just moving forward, every month our team is going to be moving forward with some additional information about how we're going to implement some of those strategies that uh, we have general agreement on as part of the MCAS. So just wanted folks to know about that. Y se van a seguir haciendo las reuniones mensuales acerca de las estrategias en las cuales sí había, estaban todos de acuerdo para empezar a implement, de cómo implementar esas estrategias donde sí había acuerdo dentro del público. And then my, my very last comment is I just wanted to let folks know that I'll probably be reaching out to maybe some folks individually. There's an opportunity that the port is looking at um, to go after a grant for zero emission trucks um, with the Department of Energy. So as I get more information, I'll probably be reaching out to, to individual committee members um, towards the end of next week. But thank you all very much. Sorry, sorry that we ran, we ran long, but uh, happy Tuesday. Okay, I'm sorry, Sandy, uh, the, the interpreter was still here. So um, thank you, Sandy, for telling me that. Um, with that, um, and Lydia, I think, did, did you wanna make another comment? Sorry, was your hand up from earlier? Uh, you can talk, go ahead and unmute yourself. Um, oh, I can't, I can't hear you again. We can't hear you. 
Okay, sorry. Okay, but we will we will reach out to you for July for the agenda. I just want to say congratulations, everybody, and thank you. I just los quiero felicitar. I think this is a huge milestone. I told Domingo there has to be a party at some point when we can all get together in person and not do weird Zoom parties. Um, eh, quiero, le dije a Domingo que hay que hacer una fiesta después de esto porque it's a lot of work and you guys are all a great group of people and I can't wait to be in a room again with you all. Um, I'm so impressed and I think that this is the best AB 617 steering committee uh, in the state and uh, I'll battle anybody from any other air district who wants to challenge that. Um, you know, we have an incredible group of people here and it's, this is what I love of my job. This contract is a contract that I really look forward to. You're making me cry because this is my life goal to make um, help communities with uh, bad air get them better. And it's so beautiful about here is that seeing all the different players that come and Sarah and Jack and Larry and Elisa and the National City folks and Ashley from San Diego and the doctors, Dr. Yoon and Dr. Perino, how lucky we've been to have you and all the people who aren't here today that started with us, like Irma Ortiz, who sadly passed away, we've learned during this process. So I just really want to recognize you all and what a hard two years it's been. And to do this during a pandemic, you guys are amazing. Domingo, Monica, all of the Air District staff, Rob Ryder, uh, Mayani, um, all of you guys, you guys are amazing. Well, but I just texted so, um, Okay, so I'm gonna, with that, mute everybody. <laughs> um, and say um, thank you. And in July, maybe we'll do some, um, we'll do a round of, of appreciations and a party. Domingo, you have to do it. And K A or B, how can I forget you? Thank you. And thank you, everybody. This is definitely a team and a community effort. And this is community work at its best. And we have to challenge each other. We have to love each other and appreciate each other and respect each other. And you guys have done that every step of the way. So. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. And thank you, you guys should be so proud. You should be so proud of yourselves and of what you've done here. This is huge. And in five years, we will see this. And um, you know, thank you everybody. Um, and with that, as your facilitator, it's been my honor. Chewy wasn't able to be here today, but I'm um, Joanne, thank you for helping. And everybody, you're amazing. So go, go celebrate with your family. Go give someone a hug. <laughs>